Welcome to episode two of testing your own trading strategies using code. In the first episode, we used Python to load in Yahoo Finance data, and from there, we added our first moving average column and plotted the values. Today, we're gonna to be implementing the last two steps of the same three-step process I use every time I wanna test a trading strategy, and it goes like this. Once we have our one data, we need to add our relevant indicators. So today, we're using moving average. That's step one. The last two steps are today's episode where we define our strategy and we assess when we want to enter and exit based on the data we have loaded in. And the third step is to test it. So we see how that strategy works based on the rules we made, based on the data we loaded in. Three step process, very simple. Everybody can do it. And today we're gonna to learn how. Um, we're gonna be building on the moving average data to define and test our first programmatic trading strategy. So buckle up, you are about to get a whole lot smarter. Remember from last episode, we ended about here, where we loaded it in the data, we defined our moving average at 50, and we took the mean and we plotted the last 100 days. So now we know how to add a moving average to the data frame that we load in from Yahoo Finance. And today we're gonna to be understanding how to make a trading strategy that is built around this moving average. So in the last episode, we just defined rolling average to be anything we wanted at 50, 10, 20, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna make this a global variable. We're gonna do window for how long we want the rolling average to be. And we're gonna call it 20, just 20. So now instead of 50 here manually, we can always just keep it at window. So anytime we wanna change what the rolling average look back is, it will do that dynamically more or less once we make a main function. I'll show you that later. And we can get rid of these the last 100 days. So our whole function ends up looking just like this. And I'm going to add this to make there be no additional title. All right. So now we have the prices in blue. And let's add a legend. So we go PLT legend. We're going to do F string for ticker close price. And then here, the second argument in that list is going to be f, f string, so we can make it dynamic uh, window, and then moving average. I think that should work. Yes, it does. So now we have our plot. Excellent. So we're gonna build upon this today to see if we can make a trading strategy that makes a line that goes above just the close prices. That's pretty much the goal, is to outperform the S&P 500. There's a lot of trading strategies that are available, but they're all pretty much, in my opinion, bad if they do worse than the S&P 500. You're much better off just doing no work and investing than trying to spend your whole life trading and not even outperforming the S&P 500. Your grandpa is literally outperforming you if you don't beat this blue line. So let's get started to see if we can come up with something simple that can outperform this blue line. Some of you guys already know the answer, but we're gonna see what, look, what it looks like today when we actually test it. So let's remind ourselves what our data frame looks like. And we have the close price, high, high price, open and low, all free data here. And so we've dropped all the NA values for our 20 day moving average. And this is what it looks like. So now we want to make a column for strategy. But there's a problem. You'll notice that this is actually what's called a multi-index, which is Yahoo Finance default recently that, in my opinion, is awful. And it doesn't add anything at all. And I could go on and on about how useless that is. But instead, we're just going to flatten it. So we need to do this. df.columns equals df.get. columns dot get level values and we just want the first one so zero so that makes our data frame look like this so you can see that instead of having spy underneath it's just all one row so we can work with this to make our strategy column so the data frame strategy column we're going to do long if prices are above the moving average and short if they're below so df close is greater than the df moving average column then 
that will be true, otherwise false. Great. So the strategy column is true when the close price is above the moving average and false when it is below. So you can see that in this instance it is lower and we have a zero and then in this instance is above and it is a one. Awesome. And for a while now in modern days, the share prices have just been below the moving average that we defined. Awesome. So what do we want to do with this? We want to use these signals to go long or short. Now, the data frame strategy column, I would like to be one or negative one so we can do multiplication later. So we're gonna do NP where. So instead of this, we're gonna get rid of this. DF, we're gonna def add MA strategy to the data frame. It's gonna go DF strategy equals MP where DF close is above DF MA we give that a one otherwise we get a negative one and we're going to return the data frame to DF equals add MA strategy data frame if we look at the data frame nice so now instead of trues and false we have one and negative one so final step we need to take the cumulative returns of the asset that we're holding which is the S&P 500 and then we need to take the cumulative returns of our strategy and we're going to multiply our cumulative returns by the strategy index, which is now one and negative one for when we are long versus short. So data frame, asset, cumulative, equals data frame, close, np dot comprod, yeah, np dot comprod, df close dot percent change times we do one plus actually no we gotta do this one plus Minus one. And we did the F. Great. So eventually, a cumulative product of returns looks like this. Let's plot. So now it looks pretty much like the close price, but you can see that our index, instead of being the actual price of the S&P 500, is now the multiplier you would get if you bought and held. So if you held this for 30 years, you would have multiplied your initial investment by 20x. Now, what happens when we do strategy returns? DF strategy cumulative equals um, NP dot come prod one one plus the f close dot percent change so just like our asset cumulative but there's a key difference times df strategy minus one and let's see what that looks like plt dot plot DF. Whoa, that looks crazy. So all we just need to do is use a moving average? No, um, I did something wrong. We need to shift everything back one day. So this 
is implying that you know there's going to be a crossover in that upcoming day, but you actually don't. So you can't take a trade the day before the signal shows up. So you have to shift everything back a day to understand why or you to understand a signal exists before actually before actually taking the trade. And this is really important because if you forget this step like I just did, um, when you are defining your strategies, you are always going to have an inflated view of how effective this is. So you need to shift everything back one right here, technically. But I don't. That's not. That's not good practice. What I just did. But to show you really quick the difference, that's what happens when you just shift it back one day. Great. So let's change everything we've done into three functions. Define get data return. Define add moving average return and define test strategy return so now we have the three-step process. Let's start with getting data. So our data now when returns price for any ticker we want. And then once we add the strategy, we're going to take this code here, add moving average strategy. And that is going to add a strategy column to our data frame. Awesome. And then we're going to test it. And we have these two lines here that pretty much test and plot the returns of our strategy. So this is a three step process. Tab. And we'll add the plotting functions too. Just to keep it organized for you guys to understand what we did today. And I'll make a little note, plot those returns. And asset cumulative is, we're gonna put this shift one into the strategy column. So dot shift one data frame. So our main function is going to shift one. We're going to add the shifting to our strategy column so it just stays cleaner. And boom. Now we can see that we've made a strategy and tested it, and it doesn't work. That's great. That's a great start. So drop in a no no values that are bad great so we can plot a legend too so plt legend and then it's going to be a list of f strings which i think we did earlier and here we got F strategy. Well, we'll do the window moving average cumulative turns. And now we have a legend that provides some more information about what's going on. Great. So that's our first one. And uh, before we go, we can just test a couple other values into what are called global variables. Let's paste them in from above. Control X, Control V. We can get rid of this code here, just keep it nice and clean. This is our final strategy code, all right here. You can copy it directly to see what's going on. So let is, let's, uh, let's try different values. A lot of people talk about the 200 day moving average as something that you can follow to gain an edge, but let's Let's check that out. And uh, you can't. It does not help. 
Hmm. Well, what if uh, we use a different ticker? The S&P 500 is very efficient. What if we did something inefficient, like Tesla? Which, you know, that's... I might have just opened up a debate, but I think it's a, it's a very nonsensical stock that we're testing here. No good. That doesn't work either. So let's let's keep it back down to 20. Let's keep the moving average at 20 and try NVIDIA. Okay, and that doesn't work either, but today I'll reveal maybe some secret information from Sharp Research. One of the top rated tickers this year is Pool. Because you stuck around to watch this video, I'll give you that for free. And we can see if that works. And again, it doesn't work on any tickers. A simple moving average strategy doesn't really give you an advantage. And I'll explain this in a later video as to exactly why that is. But what this program is designed to do is to give you that knowledge yourself. So you can explore how effective these things actually are without taking my word for it. You now know how to test this yourself. And we've seen what we can do wrong, we've seen what we can do right, and we've seen that it actually doesn't work. Moving averages seem like they give you an advantage because they are fun little tools that you can attach a narrative to. But when you assess how they work programmatically, which you now can do, congratulations, it's no good. Um, so we're going to build on this a lot in the coming days, but you can begin to see that the tools that we all know and love are not as useful as we might think.